In this video, we're going to demonstrate how you can create a main menu for your game. Click on New Game, and it'll take you to the first level. So to get started, we're just going to change some basic project settings. So let's go to Project, Project Settings. We're going to change the viewport width to 1920 by 1080. We're going to go to down to Stretch Mode. We're going to change it to Canvas Items. And the Aspect, we're going to set to Expand. And that's all we need to change in the project settings. The only thing I have in this project is an image I'm going to use for the background. You can ignore this part completely or use your own image or you can just set it to a color. So let's get started. Click on other node and we're just going to use a node. We're going to call this game and we're going to save this scene. I'm going to save mine in just the root and then scenes and call it game scene. Inside our game scene, we're going to add a child that's going to be a canvas layer. You can call this main menu. And then we're going to right click and we're going to save branch as scene. And I'm going to put mine in UI scenes and then save it as main menu scene. So now we can go into the scene. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a background image. I'm going to do a sprite 2D. I'm going to set my background image as the texture. I'm going to rename this to background. I'm just going to modify mine a little bit. I'm going to scale it by two. I'm going to take off the centered. So now you can see based on my image, it's hard to see, but this blue purple line is where the viewport is. So I'm actually just going to drag this right about there. I think that'll look good. So next, let's make sure the canvas layer is selected and we are going to add a control node. Let's call it menu. And then we want to make sure menu is selected and we're going to go to layout, anchor presets, and we're going to do full rect. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a margin container just to add some spacing inside our menu. So for this one again, let's go over to layout. We're going to change it to anchor and we're going to do full rect again. And then to give our menu some spacing, let's go to theme overrides and then constant. We're just going to check all these and then we're going to set to 24 pixels all the way around. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a panel container inside our margin container. Call this inner background. And now you can see our camera window and with our margin container, we've got some nice spacing off of there for our inner container here. Now we can go into this panel container that we called inner background and we can style it a little bit. We're going to theme overrides styles and then we're going to click new style flat box. And then if you click on it, it'll give you the options you can select. So I'm going to make mine this purple color. And then I'm also going to give a corner radius. I'm going to do 24 all the way around to give it nice rounded corners. Now to house our buttons, since our buttons are going to be in a vertical stack, we are going to use a VBox container. I'm going to rename my VBox container to inner container. Now we can build out our actual buttons. So inside the inner container, I'm going to do another margin container. And I'm going to call this button container. On our button container, come over to layout and container sizing, and we're going to set it to expand. So it'll take up all the available space that it has. So inside our button container, now we can add a button and we will call the first one new game. Let's go back in button container here. Theme overrides constants. We're going to add some margin to the button also. Do the same thing. I'm going to do 24 all the way around. So now you can see we have one button. It has taken up the entire container minus the margin that we set. So now for our button, what we could do is we could come in here and theme overrides. And like we did for all the other ones, we could just override the default themes and set it here. But I want to demonstrate using actual themes so you can create a theme once for a custom component that you can use over and over again. On top of just making it easier to add multiple buttons without having to come into the layout each time, it also makes it great if you ever change your mind on what the style of your game is going to be. You can change the colors or styles or fonts in one spot as opposed to going to each individual component. So if you come to your file system, I already created a folder inside of UI called themes. I'm just going to right click on it and I'm going to go to create new and I'm going to create a new resource. I'm going to search in here for themes and I'm just going to call mine default. You can call it whatever you'd like. Save that. And then to set the default theme, we got to go up to project, project settings. And then in file settings here, we're just going to search theme and it's GUI theme. And then for custom, you can click on this folder and navigate to the new theme that you just created. It's going to want to save and restart the editor. So go ahead and do that. So now if you open up the theme folder and go to your default theme just by double clicking on it, we're going to get this new theme window down here. Creating a new type is easy. You just click this plus here. 
Now in this window, on top of searching all the existing types, it also allows you to create your own. So for instance, if we clicked on button, we would override the button node for every single button in our project. Now there may be times that is something you want to do, so that's how you would do that. But in this case, what I want to do is create a new type that's going to inherit from the button. So we're just going to call it custom menu button, and then you can click add type. Now to set the base type that we're inheriting from, you just come to this little tool over here and click add. And now we want to search button. One thing you want to be careful of is if you type in button and hit enter or type in anything and hit enter, it's not going to use the type down here. It's going to create a new one and it's not going to know what it is. So it's not going to inherit from the button like you want. So what you want to do is find the node you want and actually double click on it. And there you go. Now we're inheriting from the correct button. So depending on the type you're inheriting from, these options will differ. So for a button, we have things like font color, font disabled color, the hover color, and lots of other things. We also can set the text size. We can also control the UI of the button when it is pressed, hover, focused, and disabled. So the first thing I'm going to do is the font color. I'm going to click this plus to override the default. And then I'm going to click on here, and I'm just going to set it to a white. And then I'm also going to override the hover. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to click on here to override it. If you wanted to change the default font itself, this is where you'd override it. We're not going to do that here, but we're going to override the font size. Again, make sure you click the plus to override it. And we'll just set it to 32 for this. And then the last thing is we want to override how the button UI looks. So for this example, I'm going to override the focus, the hover, and the normal. So let's start with the normal. Click on this empty, and we're going to do a new style flat box. And then you want to click on it to pull up the inspector. The only thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to override the color so that it's fully transparent. We're going to do the same thing for hover. Since we changed the font color from white to yellow, that's going to be our hover effect. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do new style flat box to override the color. We're going to click on the color here and then just set it to fully transparent again. And then lastly, let's do focus. This one will be slightly different. By default, when a button is focused, it's going to have a border around it. We're going to keep that border, but we're still going to want the background color to be fully transparent. So let's do that. And then since there'll be a border around it, we want to update the corner radius so that it has nice rounded corners. Now, one thing you probably have noticed by now is as we're changing this, the button itself isn't updating. And the reason is, is because we didn't override the default button for every button. We created a new custom menu button. So what we need to do is go to our button. Go to the inspector tab and then go down to theme and we're going to do a type variation and we're going to select custom menu button now you can see that this button inherited our theme overrides so the next thing we can do now is actually just collapse this and then the button container we can duplicate this and then for this button we can say settings third button we can say about and then the fourth button can be quit so let's collapse all of our margin containers here now if you notice our buttons are evenly spaced that is because if you remember we set them to expand so they're going to take up all the space available to them so one way we can add spacing around these is just add an empty control node and we can do the same thing where we select it and go to layout container sizing and set to expand so that way if you wanted to do a spacing between your but main buttons and your quit button and then likewise you could duplicate that and add a little spacing on top and then maybe a little spacing on the bottom and then you can go and save that and now you can see the buttons are working as we expect. We got the hover effect. And then if you remember, we did not override the pressed effect. So it's using the default pressed effect of a button. So our buttons don't have any functionality yet. So let's fix that. Make sure main menu is selected and then click attach script. And then I'm going to put it in the UI scripts directory. I'm going to save it as main menu.gd. Go ahead and create. So one last thing I want to do before we update this script is I just want to create a dummy first level. So we're going to go to create new scene, other node, panel container. And then inside of here, let's add a label. And the label, we'll just say first level. And then for the label, let's set the alignment to center, center, and then back at the panel container, we're going to do layout and we're going to do full rect. So now if you click on the 2D up here, this is what it's going to look like. So you can just go ahead and save that. And I'm just going to put this in the scenes folder and I'll call it world. Go ahead and save that. Now I'm going to go back to our main menu, click on the script here, 
and now we can update our script. So the first thing I'm doing, I am preloading our world scene that we just created, which is the dummy first level. I'm using an on ready variable to get the new game button and the quit button. And then in the ready function, I'm loading main menu, which is just this function here, which is just connecting the button presses to a function. So for new game, we're connecting the pressed event to on new game pressed. And then the quit button, we're doing the same thing for on quit pressed. For the on quit press, it's just quitting and closing the game. For the on new game pressed, we are getting the parent, which is game. So if we go back to our scene here, we're in the main menu script. So the parent of main menu is game. So we're setting that to this variable game. We're doing a self.q free, which again, we're in the main menu. So we're getting rid of the main menu itself. We're then instantiating the world scene that we called main scene. Remember, we preloaded the world scene that we created here. And then we we're adding the world scene to the game. So what we're doing is we're deleting the main menu here and we're adding our world scene as a child of this game scene. So let's see how that looks. Click on new game and there you go. We get navigated to the first level. Well, I suppose.